Hello, everybody. I'm going to wait just a second and give you a chance to join me tonight. I have something really strong in my heart that I want to share with you that I feel like is really strong on the heart of God all the time. And I've recently received some revelation about it, so I'm excited to share what's on my heart and also tell you about some awesome doors of opportunity coming up that the Lord has opened to us. Um, praise God. It's good to see everybody tonight. So tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the value of a soul. You know, I don't know if it's possible humanly to understand just how much a soul means to God, how much God cares for people and for one soul. But recently I was just thinking and meditating on this. I was thinking about the fact that um, it was actually out of a conversation I was having with someone about Jesse Duplantis of all people. And, and Jesse Duplantis, you know, a lot of people right now are up in arms about the fact that uh, he is uh, looking for a new jet for his ministry and all that. But I was actually thinking about the fact of how many people that Jesse Duplantis' ministry has won to Jesus. I don't know how many, I'll guess, millions of people he's won to Jesus. And usually when, um, when I, what I say to people who want to criticize somebody, uh, in the ministries, I usually say, okay, if you've won more people to Jesus than them, you have the right to criticize them. Anyway, that's just my own personal feeling. You may feel differently about it. But uh, I was actually on a golf course, and uh, God actually loves to golf. So I was spending time with God while I was golfing, and during this time of golfing, I just got this revelation from him about what a soul means. And what he showed me was this. He showed me, what if the person that you love on earth the most was about to fall off a cliff, was about to plummet off a cliff to their death, and they were actually, they were starting to fall, and you couldn't get there in time, you couldn't save them, you couldn't, uh, you know, help them escape this horrendous death, this terrible thing that was about to happen. And you have this feeling on the inside, this horrific feeling of terror and despair and so many horrible feelings flooding you all at one time because this person is about to lose their life. This person that you love with all your heart, that you care about so greatly. Think of it to your son, your daughter, your spouse, your husband, your wife, your mother, your father, whoever it is. Think of that, what it would mean to you. And all of a sudden, at the last second, somebody comes along and somehow grabs them right before they go over the edge. You can't get to them. But somebody grabs them right before they go over the edge and pulls them back. But you didn't even see him coming. It looked like it was all over. It looked like there was no way to stop it. Imagine the gratitude. Imagine the thankfulness. Imagine the indebtedness. Imagine how your heart would feel towards that person who grabbed your loved one that was about to go over the edge, that was about to die, that was about to lose their life. This is how God feels about it when we lead one person to Jesus. When we lead one person to Jesus and they get to and, and get to impact their life and impact them with the gospel and they turn from death to life. Only think about this. Death on the earth only happens for a moment. Death on the earth is momentary. But all of us are going to live forever in heaven or in hell. And the only person that stands between many people and that happening is you and me preaching the gospel. Jesus did all the heavy lifting. We know he went to the cross and he shed his blood, the Bible says, and he, you know, he is a propitiation, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for our sins, but also only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So Jesus came to reach the whole world. In other words, he doesn't have to do something else to pay the price for somebody else to get born again. He's already paid the price. But what he needs is he needs people who are sold out to the Great Commission. What is the Great Commission? It's go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. You know, the Bible goes on and talks about the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. And it uh, looks like we've got some people watching. I would just want to say thank you for watching tonight, and I have an opportunity I want to tell you about. But I had this revelation on the value of a soul, what it means to the Father's heart when we lead one person to Jesus, how much he loves them. I want to share a 
a quick vision. I didn't have this experience, but it was for, from someone that came and shared at our church. A man that was medically documented. He died for one hour and 45 minutes. His name's Dean Braxton, and you can get his tremendous book called In Heaven, and you can listen to his testimony on Sid Roth. But anyway, so Dean had this experience where he died. He was gone for an hour and 45 minutes. And I'll share a few details because they'll bless you. He said the moment he died, he was traveling at an unimaginable speed right to the throne of God, right to the feet of Jesus. He said, but while he's traveling at this unimaginable speed, he said these things went by him in the spirit realm faster that made him look like he was totally standing still like he wasn't even moving and when these things went by he had a sudden, sudden inward knowing of what these things were and they were the prayers of people on earth the prayers of people that were being prayed for him prayed for prayed for him that he would be healed that he would come back from the dead that he would be resurrected from the dead that he would come back to life and he said these prayers actually went into the Father. He didn't just hear them, but these prayers were a tangible, real thing. And they actually went into the, the, the Father's heart. They went inside Him. Wow, how powerful. Think about that. When you pray in the realm of the Spirit, those prayers are tangible. And they literally go into God. He didn't just hear them. They go in, into His heart. He hears what you say. He cares about your prayers. Be motivated to pray because it's very powerful when you pray. But he said, within the blink of an eye, he was in heaven, and he was at the feet of Jesus. And he said, when I looked at the feet of Jesus, the whole volume of Jesus' love for me hit me overwhelmingly beyond anything I could imagine. And he said this, he said, I realized immediately when I was created by God, that God created an ocean of favorite love just for me. He said, God doesn't have just an ocean of love that's really big that he shares with different people. And he loves certain people more based on their performance and others less based on their performance. No, when he created the worst sinner you, when you, you can imagine, when he created Adolf Hitler, when he created the, the person that totally went away from him, he created an ocean of favorite love for them. And that's why every single person is really God's favorite, is he has an ocean of favorite love. And, and he went on to say this, that when he looked at Jesus' hand, the full volume of Jesus' love for him hit him and overwhelmed him. When he looked at his hair, the full volume of Jesus' love hit him and overwhelmed him. When he looked at Jesus' eye, eyes, the full volume of Jesus' favorite love hit him and overwhelmed him. And then, all of a sudden, he had a thought. He thought of a brother back on earth. And he said immediately, when he thought of this other person, the full volume of Jesus' love for that person hit him and overwhelmed him. And that's when he got this revelation. We are all really God's favorite because he created an ocean of favorite love for us when he created us. You are God's favorite. Think about that. Every single person that you see is literally God's favorite. Now, that doesn't work with humanity, but that's the way heaven works. That's the way God's love works. Imagine that. Every person that you win to Jesus, every person that you share the gospel with and they come to Christ, imagine that you're winning God's favorite person back to his heart. Somebody that's on the brink of going over the cliff, somebody that's on the brink of being lost, you're bringing them back. Think about that. You know, I've always tried to comprehend how much God loves people. And I've prayed for God to increase my love for people that I would love people the way God loves people. Of course, with human love, that's impossible. But with God's love, all things are possible. When we put on Christ, then God actually loves people through us. It is the love of Christ. The Bible says, so then faith work, worketh by love. So the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. And we're able to love people not with our human love, which falls so short, but with God's divine and supernatural love. And... Um, you know, 25 years ago, 26 years ago, um, when I got born again, not long after that, I went to Bible school. And I remember, I'm going to share a little bit of a testimony I had because it's leading up to something. And what it's leading up to is this, is that 
um, I'm, I'm in this, this job 25 years ago. After I've gotten saved, I'm actually going to Bible school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm going, going to Rama Bible Training Center. What a tremendous blessing to sit under Kenneth E. Hagan. What a mighty prophet of God, apostle of God he was in his ministry. And so thankful for Rama and everything that's being done through that ministry. And while I was there, I had this job at Pizza Hut. So I'm, uh, one of the things I would do is I'd go in on Saturday mornings and I would stock the cooler. And so the truck would come. I would be the only person there for hours. It was great. Just me. Nobody else. And I would spend a lot of time praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in other tongues. And I would be in this ice-cold freezer, and yet I would be burning hot because the fire of God would be upon me. And I began to see visions. And the visions I, I began, began to see at this time is I saw these massive stadiums and open-air crusades around the world. And I saw myself preaching in these crusades around the world and God doing signs, wonders, and miracles and healings around the world. And I cherish that in my heart. I didn't share it with a lot of people. This is about 25 years ago that this happened. But when I was actually dating my wife, I didn't want to tell her what I felt like my calling was and what I felt like God was going to call me to do. I wanted to find out without me influencing her whatsoever what she felt like heaven had laid on her heart, what her calling was. And uh, she said, well, I've always seen these visions of my husband and I in these soccer stadiums and open-air meetings around the world, preaching the gospel to multitudes, uh, seeing signs, wonders, miracles happening, and great harvest of souls coming in. And, uh, it, you know, you know you've got the right woman when she's got the, right, the same calling you have. And so we both have hid this in our heart for... Uh, several decades and just waited upon God and we didn't even know we would be pastors and so we've pastored the last 12 years that's not changing we're continuing our pastoring but God is opening doors for us and you know um, I've had different opportunities open up to me over time but been waiting on God and um, about uh, two years ago Heidi Baker came to Oklahoma City and when she came here, she was laying hands and praying for people. And when she laid hands on me, um, I was mightily touched by God in this, in this event at, oh, here in Oklahoma City. When she laid hands on me, the power of God hit me. I was out for a long time under the power of God. It was just an amazing, glorious time under the presence of God, you know, just communing with God. And I was just really experiencing his power, his, the electricity going through my body of the Holy Spirit and his presence and just in, enjoying the encounter. But I wasn't getting a lot of prophetic revelation about what the encounter was about, but I was believing for impartation, so that's what I got. And when I got up, the only thing the Holy Spirit said to me is he said, I've mantled you for the nations. And so I knew that was required for part of the equipment for me to go to the, nation, the nations of the world was impartation from men and women of God. And, and then later on, about less than a year ago, or around a year ago, Reinhard Bonnke came to Oklahoma City to hold a gospel crusade in our city. And um, there was about a meeting with about 350 pastors that he was going to cast the vision for the crusade. And my wife and I, a lot of things were going on, and we were actually... Uh, we wanted to get there really early to get a good seat, and we ended up getting, we were actually running a little bit late. And we got there before the meeting started, but we were later than what we wanted to be. So we get to this meeting, and a wonderful brother in Christ here in the city said, I felt like you were supposed to be sitting right up by Reinhard Bonnke, so I got you a seat this t at this table right up front here. And I literally had a seat about six feet away from Reinhard Bonnke, Craig Haken, uh, um, uh, uh, Sharon Doherty, um, um, David Green, several of these people that many of you may know. Why do I say that? Because Reinhardt got up and he preached, and he preached about souls, and had been burning in my heart about winning the multitudes to Jesus, and, and knowing that Reinhardt has said that Oklahoma City may be his last gospel crusade in the United States, um, you know, that, that his mantle needs to be passed on to so many others. We know Daniel Kalinda is taking that mandate, taking it forward, but we need so many people preaching the gospel to the multitudes. So he came down off the platform and he took his seat at the table. Somebody was winding things up and I had such a burning desire to receive prayer from him. 
and right as things dismissed, I went immediately to, immediately to him. I didn't go to shake his hand. I didn't go to meet him, to give him a business card or anything like that. I said, I'm believing God for a million souls. And immediately he laid hands on me and he agreed with me for a million souls. And the power of God hit me. I went flying. I was out on the floor for a while. It was so glorious, the power of God that hit me that day. And I was worthless all day. I actually had a ministry meeting where I was supposed to lead a, a leadership meeting with some of my team. And I got into the meeting and I was still drunk on the Holy Spirit. And I get in this meeting, we start some worship because we like to start any meeting we're having with the presence of God and with worship. And so we were worshiping and the power of God hit me again and I fell out on the floor and we didn't have a meeting. I couldn't get up. I fell and I couldn't get up. I don't know how long I was there, but I was there quite a while and it was just a life-changing impartation uh, that I received at that time. And I knew when God was making those impartations, he does that for a reason because He's getting ready to open some doors. And so, uh, long story short, I began to build relationship overseas uh, with some people, and specifically some people in Pakistan. And um, so that's been going on for probably over a year, and I've had a chance to do some online ministry with them and, and meet lots of people. And, and then um, recently, the pastors I'm working with, they've been having crusades in Pakistan and in these crusades, I think the last crusade, they had 110,000 people in attendance. And in this crusade, 78,000, you heard me right, 78,000 people coming to Jesus. Well, I've been working with them, talking with them for a while, and we've settled on some dates. And uh, I'm going to Pakistan in September of this year, September the 18th through the 23rd. I'll be there for five days. And during this crusade, there'll be nightly healing meetings. Um, we'll be praying for the sick. We'll be going to the brick kilns where uh, they, the kids actually work in these brick kilns that it's over 110 degrees. And uh, we're trying to get, you know, these kids out of these brick kilns because it's a horrific environment. And sometimes it actually kills them to work in this environment. And so it's just a terrible situation. But Pakistan is wide open to the gospel right now. And almost every one of these uh, salvations these, and these mass crusades that are coming in, it's Muslims, it's Hindus, it's Sikhs, it's people who have not heard the gospel. And actually the crusade we're going to have is two hours outside of Lahore, Pakistan. And the reason we're going there, we're going that far out, is we want to make sure that it's a place where the gospel has not been preached and I might have a couple of pictures I can show with you right here of uh, some of these crusades and what they look like. I'm going to pull a picture up on my phone. I don't know if you can see. Well, there goes my phone. It just died. I hate that. I wish I could have showed you the picture. But anyway, I'll tell you what. I'll put on the comments of this live stream. I'm going to put a picture of some of the pictures of the crusades and multitudes of people as far as the eye can see. We've been working on all the logistics We'll be busing people in uh, by the tens of thousands. We'll have uh, uh, nine generators running all the power, all the sound. Um, it's going to be a one-night crusade, but we're, we're believing God for at least 75,000 people to be there. They're visiting. Uh, they have a team on the ground that's visiting all these villages. They're printing 10,000 posters and uh, going to visit like 500 villages around the region. So it's an opportunity to reach a tremendous amount of people who have never heard the gospel. Now think about this. Think about this. What is the, the greatest thing we can do with our lives on earth? It is to win somebody to Jesus. It's great to disciple a Christian. It's great to teach a believer how to prosper and how to walk in faith and, you know, all these things. But at the end of the day, guess what? We're all going to die and we're all going to be on this earth just a little bit of time. The Bible says our life is but a vapor. The only thing that we carry into eternity, the only thing that's going with us forever is those souls that we've won to Jesus. And I've had it in my heart for 25 years to go into the nations of the earth and to win souls for Christ. And this door is now opening. And it's a door where in this one crusade we could see, you know, it could be 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, 80,000, 100,000 people. Imagine growing up in a country where you're taught about the wrong God. You're taught about a false God. You never hear the name of Jesus. You've never seen the power of God. You've never seen miracles, signs, and wonders. 
and all you know is what you've been taught, what you've been told that's wrong, and you've never heard about the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, this September, I'm going into Pakistan, and the door is open to have this crusade. And, you know, I'm believing God for at least 75,000 people to be in attendance and for uh, a lot of first-time salvations, tens of thousands, at least 50,000 first-time salvations. And out of this, out of the previous crusades that have been going on, there's all kinds of churches being birthed. So it's not just the fact that people are praying a prayer to receive Christ, but there's churches being birthed all over Pakistan. And we're working with an apostolic, uh, reputable uh, group of people over there. Uh, Marilyn Hickey was just over them with their, over them. And many other people, if I called their name, you would know who they are. But anyway, we're working with some great people. And um, we want to help contribute to the cost of this crusade because it is a soul-winning crusade. So uh, we are asking um, all of the people that, that watch this live stream, if you can sow a seed and you can help us reach these souls. This isn't money for us to build a church. It isn't money for us to uh, increase our media ministry or even disciple people. This is money that will be used to reach souls for Jesus. It's the greatest purpose on earth is winning souls to Jesus. And so we have this amazing opportunity and one opportunity and one crusade, I'm going to have more of an opportunity to win more people to Jesus than I have in the last 25 years of being a Christian, the last 25 years of ministry. And one crusade, there could be 75,000 people that come to Jesus. The last crusade, I had 109,000 people in attendance and 78,000 salvations. You know, there's only certain windows of time in history where this kind of opportunity has presented itself. In, and it's, most of it's been in my lifetime in, in Africa where Reinhard Bonnke had one altar call in one crusade that over a million people filled out a card that this was the first time they were born again. Imagine that. One altar call. Over a million people came to Jesus. Well, God wants to do it in all the nations of the world. And he's opened a, a gigantic door in Pakistan. And I'm going through this door. I'm going, going in faith. I'm going to reach Muslims and Hindus and Sikhs, people that worship their ancestors, people that don't know any better, people that Jesus shed his blood for, people that may have never, ever heard the name of Jesus. Somebody's got to go. Somebody's got to go and tell them the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so this September the uh, 18th through the 23rd. I'm going. I'm going. And the Bible says that all of us are commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So God has either anointed you to go or he's anointed you to send somebody. I'm going. I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to go into this nation. I know there's a lot of danger. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of bombs going off, killing people. But you know, if I can't lay down my life to win souls for Christ, I'm not a real minister of the gospel. And so Anyway, this, this September I'm going, and so I'm beginning now. I want to share this with everybody. I'm asking you to share this broadcast. Share, 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 share this broadcast. I'm asking you to click on the link and sow your best seed. If you care about souls, if you care about the harvest, and I know you do, because if you're a Christian, if you're born again, you, you have the heart of God within your heart, and his heart is not that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I want you to think about what a soul is valued at to heaven. Heaven was willing to go bankrupt to win one soul to Jesus. Heaven gave its best seed. Its best seed was Jesus to come and purchase the salvation, the redemption of mankind. And so we have just a little bit of time on this earth. We just have a little tiny life. I mean, if you go to the graveyard, all it is is a little dash between two dates. It's no time at all that we're on this earth. And the, the greatest thing that we can do on this earth, the greatest thing that we can sow into, the greatest thing that we can accomplish is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, America doesn't have this level of open door. There's crusades happening in America, but you don't see 100,000 people and 75,000 first-time salvations in these types of meetings. 
Why is that? Well, it's, it's just where America is at. America's heard the gospel, most of America. Now, there's a lot of young people that haven't. My first heart is for America, and I'll always preach the gospel in America. But I want to go into all the world. I want to go to these nations where right now people are so hungry and thirsty for God. They will walk for hours. They will walk for days to come to one of these crusades. They will bring dead people with them to be raised from the dead. And I've seen people raised from the dead. I've seen, I've, I have the medical documentation of a little boy that was 28 minutes dead and we prayed for him and he came back to life. I've seen the dead race. I've seen people come out of comas. I've seen all manner of sickness and disease healed because the power of God is real. Jesus Christ is alive and his victory is our victory and his healing power is alive today and he can heal you. He can deliver you. He can set you free and he's commissioned and commanded us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Will you send us to the world? I'm asking for your help. You know, I don't, uh, our, our church, our ministry has spent tens of thousands of dollars over the years in media investment to get the gospel to the world. Right now we're going into over 210 nations with the gospel online, but God has called us to go in person as well. So we've always tried to reach the world, and, and uh, we've got videos going out there on our YouTube channel that are reaching the world to some degree. But we want to reach those who don't know the name of Jesus, that have never heard the gospel. And I want you to know that God wants to use you. As I said at the beginning of this broadcast, and the revelation I got on the value of just one soul, what does one soul mean to heaven? God was willing to sow his best seed. Jesus was willing to come and shed his blood on a cross. And what put him on that cross was not our sin. It was his love. It was his love for you and me. He was not willing that we would not have a way of escape. And I want to speak to every person who's watching me right now. If you haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you haven't surrendered to him and made him the Lord of your life, the Bible says, if you will confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You say, well, salvation for what? The Bible says, uh, for it is appointed unto men once to die, and after that the judgment. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. All of us are going to leave this earth. None of us are going to live forever in this physical body. And Jesus is going to come back one day. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. Are you ready to meet him? You can know that you're ready to meet him. I want to give you an opportunity to pray with me now. If you don't know Jesus, he could come back at any moment. Pray with me and, re and, and repeat this prayer. Just mean it from your heart. Say, Father God, I'm a sinner. I confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. I believe he died on a cross for my sins. I believe he was buried. I believe on the third day he rose again. I make him the Lord of my life. And with all the rest of my days, I will serve you. I will follow you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's the greatest decision you can make is to follow Jesus, to give him your life and to live your life for heaven's purposes, not just for earth's purposes, but to live for eternal purposes. That's where you're going to find your relevance, your, um, your joy, your fulfillment. No, and listen, not everybody is called to stand behind a pulpit and preach the gospel. You're called to preach the gospel on your job, at the grocery store, at the gas station, among friends, among people that aren't your friends, whatever it is, wherever you go, God's calling you to preach the gospel, to share the love of God, to share the, the gospel of salvation and Holy Spirit is there to help you to make you a living witness of the resurrected Christ. Amen. Well, you can click on the link. You can sow into this gospel crusade where we're believing God for 75,000 or more souls to come into the kingdom of God. I also have pictures of the venue. The venue has already been secured. The, the stage background has already been secured. Uh, the buses are being rented. The generators are being rented and there's room for 
over 100,000 people in this venue, and uh, the, a gospel team on the ground is going out with over 10,000 posters, delivering those, getting the word out that, that there is a uh, crusade, there's a gospel crusade where people can be healed, people can be delivered, people can experience a miracle from God. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray that if you need a miracle in your body right now, I want to ask you just to put your hand where, on your body wherever you might need a miracle in your body because I believe Jesus is alive and he heals today and he doesn't want you to be in pain. So I want to come against that sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus right now, I speak to any sickness or disease. Yeah, right now I'm seeing somebody's vertebrae in their back. I don't know exactly what's going on with the vertebrae, but obviously you've got pain, you've got some kind of problem in your back. I speak healing to your back right now in Jesus' name. I'm also seeing somebody's clavicle, their, their collarbone is being healed right now. I come against acid reflux in the name of Jesus. Acid reflux be healed. Acid reflux be healed and cease. In the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you right now for your healing power, your delivering power, setting people free. I lose healing, and I lose your joy, and I lose your peace, and I lose a fresh anointing on my brother and sister that's watching, watching right now from wherever you're at. Hallelujah. Sorry, I'm a little bit drunk right now. Hallelujah. God is good. We'll be blessed. It's been wonderful to share my heart with you. And uh, if you click on this link, please share this broadcast. Please put it out on your timeline. Let people know it is an opportunity to reach tens of thousands of people who have never heard the name of Jesus. And I want you to know this. Whether you sow a seed and send me or you go and do the preaching, when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to get the same reward as if you did the preaching. You did the praying for the sick. You did the traveling overseas and all of it. You're going to get the same reward if you sow as if you went yourself. So I'm asking for your help. I'm asking you to send us into the world that we might fulfill heaven's vision of winning the loss for Jesus. God bless you. It's been so good being with you tonight. I would do some shout outs, but my phone died. And so uh, I'll post some pictures on the stream of the venue that we've already got secured and some crowds from the previous crusades that have been held. But we are so excited to go into Pakistan and preach the gospel to the multitudes that they might know the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Think of this. Somebody sowed. Somebody served. Somebody laid down their life so you and so I could hear the name of Jesus and be saved. And that's happened for 2,000 years. Consider sowing your best seed to be a gospel sender, to send us into the world, to send us into this nation that's in massive revival where, where multiple, multitudes of Hindus and Muslims and Sikhs are coming to Jesus right now. A friend of mine, Todd Bentley, recently went into uh, Pakistan and held crusades with over 300,000 people coming to Jesus in a, in a three-day crusade, and he had multiple people raised from the dead as well. So great things are happening. I'm very excited. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, difficult things going on in the world right now, but the gospel is being preached around the world, and multitudes are coming to Jesus. It's time to go into all the world and preach the gospel. God bless you. Thank you for sharing this, and thank you for sowing your best seed. We so appreciate it. We can't wait to reap the harvest for Jesus so that when we all stand before him, we may come and bring him a fortune. You know, Sean Bowles prophesied to Canada and I that we would bring Jesus a fortune. I know what he was talking about. He was talking about the multitudes of souls. Hallelujah. That's, that's what's really valuable. That's what's priceless is the souls of man. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.